Hi everyone, I'm Katie Couric and welcome to Eye to Eye. While Washington debates withdrawing troops from Iraq, General David Petraeus has his hands full organizing the surge of new troops going in. He told correspondent Alan Pizzi, despite continuing violence, he's confident the Iraqi government can lead the nation to peace. There's a lot of talk that this government is once again fracturing, that there's a power struggle going on. How much of this political change that you require, the political will you require, can be accomplished while still having the rough and tumble of politics as usual? Well, I think the rough and tumble is very much a part of any uh, nation's political process. Uh, this, is, this is a full contact sport in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Uh, people occasionally joke about, you know, welcome to the NFL, this is it right here. Um, and it's, it's a sport that's played to the hilt. Uh, having said that, I have a lot of confidence in, in this Prime Minister, Prime Minister Maliki. Uh, all indications are that he has uh, very much grown into this job. Uh, clearly there are various constituencies pulling and tugging at him and, and others criticizing and all the rest of that, but he seems to be standing pretty firm in the midst of all that, uh, there are others out there, again, trying to pull the debates in different directions. That's healthy for Iraq. Uh, that, that's a good thing. This is democracy at work. Coming back to, to your immediate program, we, we were, we've been out in Sadr City and we've mm -hmm. seen what's going on there. Frankly, I couldn't believe that I was actually walking around the streets of Sadr City. And for whatever reasons, there we were, which was kind of neat. Um, but as you push deeper into it, it gets more difficult. What happens to that whole program if suddenly in the middle of Sadr City one of these guys gets in and does a mega bomb, which you know, we know how hard it is to stop those. What happens to that program then, do you think? Well, in fact, the, uh, the extremists are trying to do that. In fact, we believe that one or two of those were stopped on the way to Sadr City the other day by Iraqi security forces, by the way, and then a couple of others were detected and literally uh, stopped before they, we could even sort out where it was that they were going. But some of those that, that blew up the other day at checkpoints, uh, we believe, were intended to try to get into Sadr City itself. Uh, certainly, again, the extremists are looking for some kind of sensational attack that can reignite sectarian violence, that can uh, give people an excuse to say, well, see, we need the, the militias back. Uh, anything, again, to, to pour gasoline on the embers that are still glowing out there very much, and in some cases still, still firing. Uh, of, again, this sectarian uh, uh, feeling that is out there. So it, Sadr City is an important element uh, in, in this effort, but there are other uh, locations in Baghdad as well. Actually, we've hardened markets. I walked the other day uh, with uh, a, a well-known reporter from Al Arabiya Television, uh, of course, one of the leading uh, Arabic-speaking television stations. And uh, he couldn't believe that he was walking through a marketplace in Baghdad. And, I, and it dawned on me then, I guess, mm. you know, that there's a perception that Baghdad is literally on fire, you know, that the whole place is just smoldering. It's not to say that the situation is, uh, is in any way uh, good uh, day to day if, if there are, in fact, uh, car bombs going off and improvised explosive devices and, and still certainly sectarian mm. murders taking place. But the fact is that this city of seven million people, as you saw, uh, by and large, is a very, very vibrant city. Uh, the two largest markets, I've actually walked through both of those in the last week and a half. We've hardened them, we've put uh, barriers all the way around them. The, the Shurja market, which as you know is about, I think it's I close know, to three, and a, three quarters of a mile long, tens of thousands of people in there the day we walked through it. And then the other market that we walked through uh, yesterday in southern Rasafa, which is the largest market in Baghdad, uh, just extends in all directions uh, seemingly endlessly uh, and commerce there was absolutely booming. So uh, these markets are resilient. Uh, we have helped again to mitigate uh, damage to them, uh, but certainly the, the car bombers will be back. There will be some level of that kind of activity out there uh, for some time and, and it's only when we get all of our forces on the ground and can get out and get more into the so-called Baghdad belts, these areas, if you will, the suburbs, the rural uh, suburbs of Baghdad in which the car bomb factories are located. And we actually found and destroyed two of those in the last three weeks, but clearly there are more out there. It's, it's a long, hard slog in every sense of the word to do that. And there are people in Washington talking about get them out by 2008. Again, I come back to the political pressure. They've got their own clock. They've got their own timetable. 
what's David Petraeus's time table? Is well, again, we're aware that there are different clocks out there. As I mentioned earlier, there is a Washington clock we know, and we can hear it ticking. But you know, all we can do is just get on with the task at hand, and to keep focused on that, really riveted on that, uh, and trying to make progress day to day, week to week, and month to month. And, and as I've mentioned several times before. This is about months. This is not about days or weeks. And, and uh, I mentioned during the press conference, you know, getting these calls when I've been on the ground for about three weeks. And it was literally sort of the, one of those, you know, have you won yet call? And, uh, and I responded, no, we literally are just getting started with this effort, with the, the new Baghdad security plan. And I've made the same point to the Iraqis as well. They're under pressure also. Uh, you can feel that with the Iraqi political leaders. And they'd sort of hoped, you know, they, they said Operation Fard al Kanun is underway, that the next day, you know, all the indicators of violence would just drop off. Well, it, it doesn't happen that way. This takes hard work. It takes a degree of determination and staying power. Uh, in some cases, you literally have to outweigh the enemy. Uh, some of the enemy was, has been lying low. We've been going after various elements of them. Uh, some are emerging in other places in, in Iraq. We're going after them. We're going to push more forces up into Diyala province, which has seen a resurgence of, uh, of al-Qaeda and of some of the uh, militia activity.